I want to do a quick video about the whole controversy of um, saturated fat versus unsaturated fat and why are some uh, scientists and physicians saying, including myself, do not eat vegetable oils. So these oils that are rich in omega-6 uh, linoleic acid, uh, we think they're horrible for you. They're very bad and they're probably at the root of most diseases as we know them from insulin resistance, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, coronary artery disease. But then you have a group of um, physicians and scientists that say the exact opposite. And when you look at this, um, there is a um, publication here by the Harvard School of Public Health, for example, that says swapping saturated fat and carbohydrates for linoleic acid, the main polyunsaturated fat found in vegetable oils, nuts and seeds, lowers the risk of coronary artery disease. So they recommend when you uh, read what they're saying in here, instead of using butter, cream, lard and other animal fats as a primary source of culinary fat, one should use liquid vegetable oil like soybean oil, corn, olive and canola oil for cooking salad on the table. So this is in direct contrast to what I would say and what many other uh, physicians would say. And if we look at some studies done, the studies are confusing as well. And I believe the studies are very confusing because we've all been exposed to these vegetable oils. I mean, you know, we can't avoid them. They're in everything. They, when you go out to a restaurant, they use canola oil, they use soybean oil because it's cheap. It doesn't have much of a taste to it. You can easily cook with it and it's available. Um, and again, the American Health Association uh, promotes it as being healthy. Now, just as an aside, and if you want to read a bit of the history of this, uh, uh, I really strongly encourage you to listen to Nina Teicholz. She's amazing. She talks about, she's a, a, a journalist, scientific journalist, who talks about the beginnings of this. And it started with the American Heart Association being a tiny office in the early 1900s, 1910 or 1920, I believe. There were not many heart attacks back then. We were much healthier, we were thinner. Uh, we were healthier, we were eating, eating animal fats. There was lard and, and suet and beef tallow and butter. That's what we made our food with, right? Um, and then we switched around that time to these um, seed oils. And one of the first ones was Crisco. So Procter & Gamble started to heavily finance the American Heart Association. So they very, very strong, um, you know, bond there. And that continues, I believe, until today that there's some interest at least there. So again, keep that in mind uh, when you read uh, things from the American Heart Association and a few other associations. They're not all as independent as you might think. I think they're all somewhat influenced by this anyway. But then, in, so in contrast to this point um, here in the British Medical Journal, and this is from 2018, um, omega-6 vegetable oils as a driver of coronary heart disease. And here they're saying this is the oxidized linoleic acid hypothesis. In stark contrast to saying, hey, use more of this, this prevents heart disease. Here they're saying it causes heart disease. And I would agree with them. Um, there was a fantastic podcast between Paul Saladino and Tucker Goodrich that explained this in detail. Um, it's quite long. It's, I believe, an hour and a half, and it'll, I mean, made my head smoke. Um, but I thought it's very interesting uh, uh, to see these guys that are really, really educated on this topic talk about it. Um, I'm going to talk about this in much more simplified detail here because I think it's so complicated that sometimes, you know, we need to step back and just see the simplified explanation of this to get an understanding of it before we go into, into details of it. But here they're saying, look, fine. Uh, what are uh, what are the differences between these um, omega-6 linoleic acid vegetable oils and then saturated fats that I would promote, for example, like butter and beef tallow, uh, coconut oil even. These are all saturated fats. So what are the differences? And one difference is if you take in those vegetable oils, one thing that will happen is that your LDL cholesterol decreases. And here these scientists that promote vegetables say, see, less um, and less LDL cholesterol, less heart disease. There's a direct correlation between them, and there you go. And then people point out, well, we did studies and we showed that LDL by itself doesn't harm the arteries or anything and doesn't cause plaques. So how come? And then they say, well, we did more studies. It's oxidized LDL. So the LDL oxidizes and that causes heart disease. The more LDL you have, the higher the proportion of oxidized LDL that will damage your arteries will be. And so this is a direct correlation and we've proven it and there you go. So the question is, how does the LDL oxidize and what part of the LDL oxidizes? Because LDL cholesterol, LDL means low density lipoprotein. That is not a fat in itself, that is a carrying vessel, like a, like a bus that carries around different lipids, so different fats. Now, which part of this oxidizes and where's the issue? So one thing that gets pointed out is there is a 
um, signaling molecule on there called ApoB100, by which the LDL particle gets recognized and gets redirected to the liver, and that's important. And some scientists have proposed, well, high sugar in the blood, so elevated blood sugars uh, are damaging to that part of the LDL. Now the LDL won't be recognized, and it's easier to go to the arteries, where it can cause um, atherosclerosis. You know, they develop these foam cells and, and all these macrophages come in and you get these plaques building, right? Okay, then the question is, well, why do we have elevated blood sugars for a prolonged period of time? Because it's normal to have elevated blood sugars right after a meal. And you know, when you're taking carbohydrates, blood sugars go up. They go up and then it should quickly go down. Now, if you have impaired glucose tolerance, if you have early diabetes, what happens is blood sugar does not come down easily. It stays elevated for quite some time and we can measure that. So we can measure after we give uh, uh, sugar, there's a test that we can do. We do a blood test after half an hour, one hour, two hours, how much sugar is remaining. So how well is your insulin working to get the sugar out of the blood into the cells where it should be so that your blood sugar comes down. And um, again, why is that not working in, in the first place? So is it because we've just taken in too much sugar? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense because we take in more sugar, guess what? We make more insulin. But at some point, it seems that the insulin doesn't work so well. So it doesn't have to do with the insulin itself. We have plenty of insulin initially, at least, even when we later on develop type 2, type 2 diabetes. Initially, we make enough insulin, but it doesn't really do the job. Why is that? Why is the insulin resistance at the level of the cell? So we need to investigate that further. I think it's too simplified to say, well, now we have too much sugar, we damage this, fine. And what it comes down to in the end, and, and researchers like Chris Kenobi, and he's a fantastic presenter, he has talked about this at length. He looked at this from the perspective of macular, macular degeneration, which is an, an eye disease. He's a, he's, a, he's an eye surgeon, where you know we, we have blindness ultimately in older age, and that has to do, um, again, with um, kind of an insulin resistance or a, a, a problem with the cells in the macula. This is the point in the eye where you have a focal vision, where you see things very well. So you still have your peripheral vision, but the focal vision really goes, goes blind. It's a really sad disease and that's very common now. But why is that not common in some indigenous cultures that do not eat those seed oils? And so he was investigating that and he found the only difference between us and these cultures is not really how much sugar we take in or you know, carbohydrates in general, Yes, we do have more refined sugars probably in our society and more refined flours, and I think that's an issue as well. But the one unifying point that was different really and consistently different between our Western culture and these cultures was the intake of these uh, seed oils because they don't consume these hardly at all. And whatever they get in terms of the omega-6 linoleic acid, they get from animal products and there's very little in there. And I talked about that in other videos, our traditional ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids was about one to one. This was when we were hunters and gatherers. Today, it's like 20 to one. The 20 is the omega-6 and one is the omega-3. And that's a shitty ratio. That's not good. That's problematic. Um, but still, you know, Harvard School of Health wants us to take in more. And, you know, the American Heart Association promotes it. And if you go to the you know, American Dietary Guidelines in 2022, they're still saying, hey, have healthy vegetable oils. So, uh, you know, this is a very, very, very big controversy that I think we need to understand in order to really make educated decisions and uh, hopefully arrive, you know, at the correct decisions, which is to avoid these oils because they are damaging. So when we look at how does insulin resistance come about, and when you lis listen to Chris Kenobi's work, he explains this quite well, it does come about through these um, vegetable oils, this alpha linoleic acid. We don't burn this very well. It accumulates in our cells. We don't get rid of it easily. It sits down there for about two years. And that's why I mentioned earlier to compare or do studies within our population is very difficult because we've all been eating these vegetable oils, whether we like it or not, in, in, in our foods for most of our lives because they're, they're present in everything and all processed foods, you know. You can't find hardly any packaged food in the grocery store that doesn't have soybean oil or canola oil in it. It's in cereal, it's in, it's in, it's in, it's in everything. And um, most oils or mayonnaise has it. And you know, you, you get exposed to this all the time unless you look for it and you avoid it. I think that's really the only way to go down the line. But anyway, so, so, so we are exposed to this all the time. So it's, to do a study within our population is not uh, uh, very useful, it seems. So it um, it's, it's becomes uh, quite tricky. So we usually have to compare ourselves to people 
you know, indigenous people that are not exposed to these oils. And, you know, there's few and few of these around right now because, you know, in the 60s, 70s, when studies were done, they were more prevalent. It was easier, I think, to kind of look into these different, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, populations and to do better comparisons. And one thing they did was actually, they actually, you don't just measure the level of these fats in the bloodstream. That's very misguided because, again, they do accumulate in our cells. And then our fat cells, one thing that does, they, they cause hypertrophy of our fat cells. So they don't, usually fat cells, you know, they go to a certain size and then they can divide and then they get, you know, uh, used, you know, basically they can also get destroyed. But when we eat these uh, omega-6 uh, linoleic acid containing seed oils, this fat cell loses the ability to properly, um, you know, work and divide and do its thing. And it hypertrophies, it becomes huge. So fat cells go to an enormous amount. They get, they get much bigger and they become malfunctioning and they develop insulin resistance at the level of the cell. And then they send out signals. Because one thing we understand now is fat is not just this tissue that sits around and doesn't do anything. Fat cells can send out you know, uh, signaling molecules, hormones to communicate and to talk to other cells. And these fat cells, when they become sick and they become insulin resistant, now they don't even want to take up sugar anymore. And what happens when uh, cells don't take up sugar anymore? Well, our blood sugar goes up because you know the sugar doesn't go anywhere. But they also send out signals to other cells, to cells of the skeletal muscle, uh, and and another cell saying, "Hey, don't take up, you know, become insulin resistant." So there's a malfunctioning process going on, and it has to do with oxidation of these um, fatty acids, of these omega-6 linoleic fatty acids. So this is a complicated topic, but think about it this way these 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 fatty acids this omega-6 linoleic acid is not used directly as fuel we don't burn it very easily also our own body doesn't produce this this is something that we don't make and we don't really need it's been shown we thought for a while we need a certain amount of it but it turns out we don't really need it we all, or we need very very little of it we need a tiny amount remember one to one ratio and today that's way off but so these this fat accumulates in in our cells and it oxidizes and the breakdown products of this omega-6 linoleic acid are highly toxic and they cause cancer, heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, anything you can think of by impairing cells, by really damaging cells. This is a very damaging, uh, very horrible uh, process. And these metabolites of omega-6 linoleic acid, and this is again, really mostly present in huge amounts. We're talking about 40, 50, 60% in some of these seed oils. Whereas if you eat um, animal fats, it might be one or 2%, very little. And that's about the ratio that we should consume this as. But today we are consuming about 10% of our, our dietary uh, uh, energy from these seed oils. That's a huge amount. I mean, this, we've never done this evolutionary. This is a very new thing. And I would argue it's a terrible thing. So anyway, so, so as these fats break down, they have these um, horrible, uh, toxic breakdown products accumulating and they cause disease. So now we have insulin resistance. So now blood sugars go up, which will further contribute to damage um, LDL. Um, but also interestingly, and this is the hypothesis of this paper here at least, um, the uh, linoleic acid is also present in the LDL cholesterol and can be damaged there. And that's an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> but they write here in this paper the um, measuring changes in linoleic acid concentration in subcutaneous adipose tissue in the USA revealed an approximate 2.5 fold increase, 2.5 fold increase in linoleic acid increasing from 9.1% to 21.5% from 1959 to 2008. Um, that is crazy. I mean, that is a huge increase in this fatty acid. And it's again, it's stored in our fat. That's where we should measure it. And most studies don't, they don't look there. But that's really where you, where you find it. Um, and again, they say, well, there's a strong correlation, obviously. The authors of the study also note that the increase in adipose uh, tissue linear leg paralleled the increase in prevalence of diabetes, obesity, and asthma. So these three diseases for sure are directly correlated to the increase to um, linoleic acid consumption. Now, correlation doesn't equal causation, but here, this is a very strong correlation and it holds true for most diseases. You look at uh, coronary artery disease, you look at cancer, you look at macular degeneration. As our, in, as our consumption of these vegetable oils goes up, these diseases go up at about the same 
in our rate. And that's really a very strong correlation uh, that holds true across uh, many of these diseases. So they further write here that the amount of linoleic acid in adipose tissue, but also in platelets, is additionally positively associated with coronary artery disease, whereas long chain omega-3, which is EPA and uh, DHA, levels in platelets are inversely related to coronary artery disease. Now, where do we have EPA, DHA, where it's from? You know, we, we can produce them and you know, eat them from, get them also via uh, breakdown from animal fats. So this is, this is more really something that we should eat actually a lot more of, and that's inversely related to coronary artery disease. So this is, again, in stark contrast to the other papers that you're reading, where they're saying, hey, eat more vegetable oils because it will avoid uh, coronary artery disease. So this is in stark contrast to that, right? But again, here we're looking really more at the um, uh, level, um, at the molecular level, and where they, uh, how they can contribute. This talks about mechanisms, you know, and I think it's very important to actually actually do that. So this paper goes on actually to say that uh, the um, low-density lipoprotein oxidation hypothesis gained traction in the 1980s because it was noticed that in general, uh, native unoxidized LDL does not cause foam cell formation. So that's important. Foam cell formation again. That's kind of what uh, happens at the level of the arteries when these cells then invade the uh, endothelial lining of the arteries and cause uh, plaques to form. And they're saying in here, well, uh, we don't get these foam cells or, or any of this unless the LDL becomes oxidized. And that was a very important step. So first of all, it needs to be oxidized. And how does it get oxidized? And again, there, people, people's opinion varied a bit, but again, it seems more and more that really it's at the level, when you look at the molecular level, it's at the level of this linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is responsible for this because it oxidizes actually fairly easily, it turns out. So I thought this was interesting to um, really see stark contrast in some of these publications. Now, again, when you look at, uh, uh, you know, data from population in, in the United States, when we look at data from before 1900, we hardly have any heart disease. We hardly have any people dying of, of a heart attack. We have very few people dying of cancer. We have very little diabetes and we have very little obesity. And even when you look at pictures of people from the 1950s, you will be very hard pressed to find a large number of obese people. Whereas if you looked at, you know, and, and I'm gonna show some pictures here from uh, California beaches from the 1950s. And then if you take pictures today, you wanna see a huge amount of people that have clear obesity, right? Just by that, you see, I mean, our population has become a lot more obese. I mean, there's no, there's no question about it. We're getting a bit better in preventing heart attacks because our, you know, medical system has advanced, you know, medical science has advanced. We know how to treat heart disease better, how to find it earlier and prevent it. But the in, uh, increase in coronary artery disease is on the rise. Again, we have less people, fortunately, dying from heart attacks because we spot it earlier. We can do uh, our things like coronary artery bypass grafts or stents. So we can help people prevent uh, a, a, a heart attack. But we have a lot more people getting to that point where their coronary artery uh, calcium scans are very high, showing that they do have atherosclerosis. So um, I think it's important uh, to understand this. So. I am a strong proponent of cutting out all the vegetable oils. And I, I did a video where I said, this is the most important thing you can do for, for fat loss. Because really, how do we start losing fat is if we become insulin sensitive again. And um, I think the one thing that I wanna stress on, on this talk, I know this is quite confusing. There's a lot of uh, uh, molecular biology involved. And that's something that, you know, even for me, that's something that I'm not too familiar with because even though, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a physician and I had this in, in medical school, this is something that is very advanced and something we did never talk to this amount of detail on there. Plus there's new research since I graduated and I graduated in 2003. So there's been a lot more research on the topic since then. But understanding that when you eat these seed oils, this part of the seed oil, this really bad part, this omega-6 linoleic acid, and it's important we say omega-6 linoleic acid because there's other linoleic acids like an omega-3, which is very, very different. And that's something that is actually not harmful. But this omega-6 is very unique, omega-6 linoleic acid, very unique to these seed oils. And we believe it's a hugely damaging molecule. And it's been shown in, in research that it accumulates, it causes uh, fat cell hypertrophy, it causes insulin resistance, and it does cause via its breakdown products um, a high 
risk of people developing cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and many other diseases, macular degeneration, and so on. So this has been established and it's very clear. And I am shocked that we are still promoting these oils. And part of that possibly to me is financial interest. You know, um, there's an environmental push to say we need to get away from um, eating um, animal products. But again, I don't agree with because if we do have animal products that are produced and raised in the proper way, the environmental impact, I think, can be less than agriculture actually is. There's obviously the ethical component, and I respect people arguing that. That's absolutely fine. However, um, if we look at this logically, um, there's no need to say, oh, I'm you know, eating these bad vegetable oils and risking my health because I want to protect the environment. That is, I think, misguided. So again, people that do vegans or vegetarians that have ethical concerns uh, about eating other animal products, that's some, certainly something that I do understand, but keep in mind, for our optimal health, I believe that um, eating unadulterated animal uh, proteins and fats is very important and it's very healthy and eating saturated fat is not a bad thing uh, at all. And cutting out vegetable oils is a very important step um, I will do a few more videos explaining this in a bit more detail. I know this is very confusing, but again, uh, just want to clear this because we have these two very, very different opinions out there. And, um, you know, we have to understand where they come from and how they've been established. And then hopefully you make good decisions for yourself where you can uh, significantly improve your health. And again, I still recommend to be optimally healthy, have grass fed uh, butter, have um, beef tallow, eat some coconut oil if you like, and have very small amounts of olive oil and of avocado oil. You, need, you don't need a lot of those. But then you have very good fats, cut out all these other fats diligently, try to really cut out any product that, that has these uh, seed oils, vegetable oils. They are terrible. I think the research more and more shows this. And I believe at some point, even our medical authorities will catch on and um, hopefully make the right recommendations for us. Thank you.